Jason Boyce from Executive Real Estate, and we're here today for Just a Tip Tuesday. And today we're covering lack of supply on the market. We're gonna go over some charts, love charts, that show the trends, and we're gonna talk about why. So let's start here. So this is a four year chart showing uh, homes for sale in the entire state of Connecticut. Now, as you can see, even before COVID, before the pandemic, we were on a slight downward trend of less houses being listed for sale each year. But then you can see here, when the pandemic hit in 2020, we drop off a cliff and that's only continued down. So the pandemic definitely has a large role to play in why there's a lack of supply in today's housing market. But the chart also shows that there was a slight downward trend prior to that. So we're going to cover that. Here's your one year chart, as you can see, continued downward. So why is there a lack of supply? So we're going to look at pandemic reasons and non pandemic reasons. So the pandemic, baby boomers are the biggest percentage amongst people in the pandemic that are not moving. So why are they not moving? Um, they are the ones most at, most at risk due to the information we've been told about the coronavirus. And so they don't want to move. They're comfortable in their house. They're trying to stay safe in their house and they're not going to move. And they're definitely not going to move to an assisted living facility because that's where some of the biggest breakouts have occurred with coronavirus, right? So baby boomers are sitting tight. They're not selling and they're not selling to create forever home for someone else. Telework, when the coronavirus hit, all of a sudden people were able to work from home. So now people that have to move for jobs don't necessarily have to move for jobs if they can telework. That and a lot of people aren't moving because they wanna, they wanna wait and see, right? When there's uncertainty, a lot of times people freeze. So they wanna wait and see how the dust settles on teleworking to see what their options are going forward. Um, Part of the answer is there's a low supply, so there are limited options. And when there are very few houses to choose from, and when the, the good ones that do come on the market all of a sudden get bid up and have multiple bids and you're in a bidding war, that just turns off a lot of people. And if they don't have to move, they're not going to. So there's less options out there for them to have, so they're just not really looking. Um, and when the pandemic hit, there was a foreclosure moratorium. So even people that had been negatively impacted uh, for work or laid off or whatever due to the pandemic, even if they're not paying their mortgage, they weren't being foreclosed on. So none of those houses have been hitting the market. Now they're starting to trickle back on, so that should have a slight uptick, but even then it's gonna be, tough. It's gonna be small. Non-pandemic issues. So in 2008, everyone knows we had uh, the housing crash. And in the housing crash, a lot of builders went belly up. They were over leveraged and they had big developments going on. That's when we had one of the biggest building booms in history. Well, ever since then, builders have been fearful. No one's building spec homes, you know, a couple of custom homes. Those are already sold. Those are already under contract. And the pace of building since 2008 hasn't kept up with the need for housing. So new homes are not being built. And if people aren't moving into new homes, they're staying in their old ones. Um, on top of the crash, uh, local building regulations, they're getting harder and harder to get stuff approved. Uh, it's more tedious of a process and that just deters some people. And since the 2008 crash and other economic issues, there are less people working in the construction force. So there are just less construction crews and less people working in that industry. All those contribute to less new houses being built. So then people can't move into them. They're not freeing up other houses or there's not new houses going on the market. Also low interest rates. A lot of people have chosen to just refinance and stay in their house for a super low monthly payment. I mean, why would they move? Um, and because rates are so low, a lot of people have gone out and gotten a second home. So now they're not selling, they're just carrying a second home because they can afford to. Um, so there you go. Uh, based on the research I've done, 
these are some of the top reasons why people just aren't selling houses and there's a lack of supply. Uh, prediction alert, do I think it will change? Eventually, I don't think it's gonna be anytime soon though. Based on the trends we're seeing, um, I think 2022, we're gonna see a lot of the same. We're gonna see very limited supply uh, when the houses do come on the market. You're gonna see a lot of people going after them because there are so few of them. I think in 2023, when the dust, hopefully the dust starts to settle on coronavirus, the telework thing is kind of ironed out. People feel, feel more comfortable with where it's going. I think you're gonna see some supply start to come back on. As foreclosures start to come back on the market, I think that'll have a little tick up as well. Um, but I don't see a drastic turn. The trends aren't showing it. Um, and any questions, comments, reach out to me. I'd uh, be more than happy to engage in conversation and hear what other people have to say uh, about why they think there may be such a lack of supply. Have a good day and uh, talk to you soon.